Um, we are reconvening the meeting of um, Monday, um, December 21st, the Yellow Springs Village Council meeting. We had this in executive session. Um, we did call the roll already, and we'll move on to announcements. Um, any announcements? Yes. Um, because uh, council has um, decided to get uh, out of the ACE task force, uh, <clears throat> I felt that it was appropriate for, um, to make an effort to bring different uh, organizations and members of the community together to look at how we can develop a, a local comprehensive um, approach to drug issues in the community with um, relationships outside of the community. And so I, I am going to take some leadership in this effort. And I have sent out an email to um, the schools, to Antioch College, to the village government, the local police, uh, TCN, uh, mental health providers, and um, HRC has also expressed interest in being involved. And so I'm just making this announcement now. Hope to have a an initial meeting in January, so that if there are other people that are interested in getting involved, they can contact. Thanks, Karen. That was quick. Good job. Anybody else? You know, I just want to uh, thank all of our village team uh, for all the great service this year. Wish you guys great holidays and also to the community. Remember, uh, you still have a couple more days to shop local for the holidays, so uh, please do. Thank you. Um, I have one announcement. I expect to see the uh, rent from Rumpke here tonight, and I don't see him. But Lori had asked at a previous meeting about recycling and potentially getting new stickers for the cans. Um, we're still looking into getting new stickers for the cans, but he did say, if you are in doubt about whether something can be recycled or not, please just put it in your recycling bin and they will sort it out. So there was a question about that. Thanks. Can, can I have one? Oh. Uh, I'd like to also uh, which our, our staff is uh, you know, happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy, happy New Year's, and thank you for the job well done this past year. And uh, there's a lot of things that we got accomplished. And, uh, looking forward to great things. Very good. It was a good year. And we may as well also thank all the volunteer work on committees and commissions and boards. Um, there's a few commission and board members here. Mm -hmm. People have given up a lot of evening time to do pretty important work for us as well. So I want to thank people for being involved. Great. Thank you. So I have nothing to say. I think everybody covered it all. <laughs> thank us. I think we should thank us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> great to work on. That is true. It has been great. Um, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have the minutes of September 7th regular meeting, the minutes of the September 10th special meeting, uh, which was the uh, presentations from the water plant finalists, and we also have the October and November financial reports. Can I get a motion, please? Okay, so I have to recuse myself from the special meeting. Okay. Minutes. And yes. as does Jerry. Okay. I move. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, review of the agenda. Um, one item that um, we will be removing um, from legislation is um, resolution 2015-58 related to the contract for the clerk of council. Um, we did have Judy's review. It was an excellent review, um, but we are going to rework her contract to um, turn it from a one-year contract into a three-year contract, so we will do that at the next meeting. Anything else um, related to the agenda? Okay. Um, Lori, um, there weren't any petitions in communication. Not that we made it into the electric pa electronic packet. I was a little nervous. Like, oh, I hope I didn't miss anything, but we should have seen them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on to public hearings and legislation. Um, Let's, this first one I think we can read in by title only, Judy. Yes, you were so fast. This is Ordinance 2015-32, repealing section 606.05 of the codified ordinances of the Village of Springs, Ohio, and enacting
enacting new section 606.05. Uh, and what I have extending Yellow Springs police powers to village owned properties located outside the village limits. Um, can I get a motion please? Second. Okay. Um, Patty? <coughs> There are three properties that the village owns that are outside the municipal limits of the village. They are uh, Ellis Park, uh, Sutton Farm, and the water plant. And currently, um, our police department cannot enforce any ordinances or laws on these properties because they're outside the municipal limits. This would allow them the power to enforce any and all laws on those properties. Okay. <coughs> any comments or questions from council? This is the second reading of the ordinance. Um, I will open the public hearing. Questions or comments? Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Asplund? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Winter? Yes. Next is ordinance 2015-33. Uh, and this is repealing section 206.01 of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and enacting new section 206.01. Raising the discretionary spending limit for the village manager to $30,000. Uh, can I get a motion, please? Second. Oh, I guess, yeah, we do. So um, the our current limit is $15,000. Um, the state allows a limit of fifty thousand um, dollars. So this is just this would just be on expenditures that council had essentially already were or would already be budgeted, but that um, it might be of an emergency nature that uh, to wait to a council, until a council meeting um, would be problematic. So Patty has asked that it be raised to thirty thousand, um, and I think council was agreeable to that. Any other comments or questions? This is the second reading of the ordinance. I will open the public hearing. Seeing and hearing no comments, I'll bring it back to council table. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Asplund? Yes. Wintra? Yes. Uh, next is 2015-35. This is the 2015 Supplemental Appropriations and Declaring an Emergency, Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. And we'll let Melissa explain. Okay. Well, we, um, can I get a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Melissa, would you explain, please? Basically, I had to change one figure um, in the supplemental appropriations. Uh, the original appropriations were, uh, well, let's see, it's for the line that's on the second page, section four, fund 360 OPWC loop completion grant. Uh, there was a reduction. Um, the, the original allocation was four hundred twenty-one thousand dollars, four hundred twenty-one two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it's been reduced to three hundred sixty-four thousand one hundred and five. Um, in the meantime, I was preparing the uh, estimated resources to send in to the county auditor, and when I was comparing uh, the resources and the appropriations, I noticed that there was a discrepancy because in the meantime of creating this. Um, there was another bill that needed to come in, and uh, the project also came in under budget. So that affected things slightly, which meant that we needed to appropriate less than what I had thought because we had savings that were still left in that fund that were already appropriated originally. So it's actually a reduction. So I just had to change that one line, and what that will do um, with the estimated resources that I already turned in and were approved by the county, that will zero out that uh, grant fund since the project is now complete. So mm -hmm. it was a timing issue, and it was actually less than what we thought. Great. So. Any comments or questions from council? This is an emergency ordinance, so we will need to have a public hearing. I will open that hearing. Seeing and hearing no comments, I'll bring it back to council table for <coughs> vote. All right, Sims? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Asplund? Yes. Housh? Yes. Winter? Yes. Okay, well, the next one I'm going to read, and I'm going to read in full. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution 2015-52, appreciation for Lori Asplund's eight years of service on Village Council. Whereas Lori Asplund has served with energy, compassion, and dedication on Village Council since her election in 2007, and again in 2011, and whereas both Council and the Village of Yellow Springs have benefited from her thoughtful and informed approach to sensitive topics, 
And whereas Lori has been a valued colleague and partner in many diverse debates and difficult decisions, and whereas Council wishes to honor Lori's commitment and service to the Village of Yellow Springs, to Village staff, and to Council. Now therefore, the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs hereby resolves that Lori Asplund is hereby officially recognized for her devotion to her community as shown through her service on Yellow Springs Village Council. Section two, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs hereby advises relaxation and enjoyment of the first, second, and third Mondays of the month, as well as during the many hours you would have spent in research, reading, consultation, and preparation for meetings. I shouldn't have looked at two. <laughs> Section three, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs will officially miss your presence at the council table. Or even berate me for a decision or stance they could only shake their heads at. 
Um, and I just think it's vital every once in a while to acknowledge the remarkable fact that within this village we have a functioning <coughs> that is a real, noisy, messy, representative democracy. My last campaign cost me exactly zero dollars. I love biking through the downtown, and everybody, which cost nobody money because I didn't spend any. I love biking through the downtown on my way to a meeting, usually racing the clock and losing to the clock. <laughs> um, our local representatives are not multimillionaires whizzing through towns and limousines with tinted windows. Big money does not rule our decisions. People from all backgrounds speak up, show up, and are heard, and I mean that with all my heart even if we don't vote your way. There's so much that's out of our hands and in the control of much less democratic organizations, including the state of Ohio and our current U.S. government. Our tiny little local democracy here is a rare and precious thing, both in human history and in the U.S. today. Please take a moment to cherish it. I'm very grateful to have played a small part in this little human miracle. Next is Resolution 2015-61, authorizing an enterprise zone for 888 Dayton Street in cooperation with Green County Department of Development. Um, should we, let's read this one. Actually, you missed one. 56. Yeah, oh. yeah. <coughs> Sorry, oh my gosh. Okay, yes, we did. That's a big one, too. Um, a reading of Resolution 2015-56. Authorizing the village manager to enter into negotiations with Shook Construction and Jones and Henry Engineers. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Patty? Um, I enclosed in the council packets um, this week a brief recap of the process so far and how it was approached, the, the water plant process. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions about the, the process? Okay, um, the committee, after reviewing um, the proposals uh, and partially scoring them as it is the way that you're supposed to do it with a design build process, um, we then had the presentations of Shook and Jones and Henry and also CDM Smith constructors. Uh, after that, the committee met once again to finish scoring the, um, the two presenters. And Shook and Jones and Henry came out with the highest score, and we recommend, we the committee, recommend to the council that we enter into negotiations with them, and I see they are here tonight, um, to reach a contract on the new water plant. Um, the other members of the committee are here. Karen and Jerry were on the committee as well as myself. Brad, John, I guess Richard is missing tonight, and Johnny Burns. Um, and so everyone is here to answer any questions that council or anyone else might have about this um, before we pass the resolution. Questions? I mean, we just think this is the most expeditious thing going forward. It'll it will keep our um, July construction date, um, which we are very committed to. Um, so, and and the, we we appreciated the. The presentation. Um, <coughs> we appreciate the local, um, the local firm, the local workforce, and um, think that uh, um, certainly the, the <coughs> abilities and, and the, the history that, that Shook has um, certainly gives them the qualifications. And I think uh, I'm hopeful we'll be able to come to a negotiated uh, contract. With them. Yeah, and I, I was very impressed with the presentation that we heard. Uh, a week and a half ago. Um, yeah, it's uh, exciting. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions from the citizens? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call the vote. Everyone in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, now we will be in touch. Yes. <laughs> thank well, you, guys. And th yeah, thanks again for the committee's work on this, too. I know how much time you guys spent. Yeah. But that's, that, and that's also, it has been a lot of time and it's been, the staff's been great and it's amazing how involved and, and it, it's just gonna make it so much better of a project um, when we're done. Uh, lastly, we have resolution 2015-61, authorizing an enterprise zone for ADB Dayton Street in cooperation with Green County Department of Development. Judy, would you please read that? Yes. 
<clears throat> Whereas council desires to enter into an enterprise zone agreement with Green County and Dayton Mailing Services to enable a business and production facility expansion project within the village. And whereas Green County has prepared an enterprise zone agreement and the village manager and village solicitor have reviewed this agreement and recommend the village authorize the village manager to enter into this agreement. Now therefore the council of the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that, section one. Village council accepts the recommendation of the village manager and village solicitor and hereby authorizes the village manager to enter into the inter enterprise zone agreement with Green County and Dayton Mailing Services Incorporated in form substantially similar to the agreement attached here to as exhibit A. Section 2, this resolution shall take effect at the earliest time allowed by law. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, so we do have uh, several people here. We have Pete Williams from Green County Department of Development, and we also have the folks from Dayton Mailing Services. I think, does it make sense to start with you, Pete, I think? Yeah. To talk about the first zone itself? And then introduce our, mm -hmm. our new friends. Sounds, sounds great. Well, thank you again, Village Council, for your time tonight, and thank you so much to Patty for the help along the way, getting it prepared. And um, one, uh, in addition to the potential, uh, the, the consideration for resol uh, the resolution before you folks tonight, I did want to add that the Green County Improvement Corporation, the CIC at Green County, voted 11 days ago to grant, uh, through our new Economic Development Incentive Program, to grant to Dayton Mailing Services $50,000 to assist with their expansion plans that I think uh, they're going to talk about a little bit tonight and I just wanted to say that it's been uh, it's been really fantastic working with the, the members of council that we've been able to uh, work with hand in hand and I'm happy again at any time to answer questions about this project or other projects that we're working on countywide and how the village uh, can can better benefit by some of the new things that we're doing because as uh, Karen and Brian found out at the CIC meeting uh, Thursday before last we are trying to take our uh, stance in a different direction of how we make Green County the best destination for businesses that are already interested or potentially interested in a location here. So if there's no questions about the specifics of the Enterprise Zone, I would love to introduce to you some folks that we've gotten to know well over the last uh, very short three weeks here. Um, Christine Souter is the owner of Dave Mantling Services along with Ken Souter, and Tom Cooper is their operations uh, CE, COO, I believe. No? Just a guy. Yeah. Tom's a guy named Ron Wong. <laughs> Did you drive tonight, Tom? I thought Tom's great. Um, Tom's been who worked really good directly with Tony Chimbrum from my staff and making sure that we had everything ready. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say before I bring these folks up that we mentioned at the last meeting, and I know is very important to not just this community, but every community we've done an enterprise zone in. Um, not only were the schools notified per statute, but the schools were involved from the very beginning. We, we sat down with the superintendent um, before we had a application in hand to let them know that this could be coming up and this could be coming up for consideration. While the amount that we're requesting for abatement does not rise to the level where the schools are required to vote in the affirmative, we still thought it was best practice to make sure that the superintendent was comfortable with what we were bringing forward so he could brief his board members on that very same thing. And if they did have a comment, then they could offer it at this time. So we want you guys to know that the schools were not only notified per statute, but we went um, on Karen and Brian's recommendation um, we went above and beyond to bring to sit down with, with Mario and make sure that everyone there was comfortable with what we were looking to do. And that was a very productive meeting. And, and as we said at the last meeting two weeks ago, they're thrilled at the opportunity of these potential new jobs in the village. So, um, Pete, would you just give a brief, just talk about the, the mm -hmm. percentage of the abatement mm -hmm. and the time, the length of time, yes. and on what portion of the project? Well, currently the property 888 Dayton Street is uh, valued by the county auditor at around $700,000. That valuation brings into the six political subdivisions affected about $20,000 a year. The proposed expansion that Dave Mailing Services is looking to do on the building is a $1.5 million expansion on the current valuation of the building. That would produce estimated about another $40,000 of taxable revenue. Of that $40,000, we would, we're proposing an abatement of 75% of the new valuation. So the original $20,000 that's coming in is still coming in. Of the new 40,000, 10,000 is coming in day one. 30,000 will be abated for a period of 10 years, and then year 11, you got to get it all into perpetuity. Income taxes are years day one, um, and all the uh, all the great lunches and uh, and.
the happy hours that Dave Mailing Services will spend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will as well. And I believe you said it can also be, uh, it's also re reviewed every year. Correct. correct? The, uh, the Ohio Enterprise Zone program mandates a yearly ta a review by the Tax Incentive Review Council, which is staffed um, by the Department of Development, um, but there also will be an invitation for a member from the Village Council to be a member of that board to review the numbers that they've hit, and um, should they not reach the numbers that they that they said they would, um, there are measures in there to either reduce the abatement or take the abatement away altogether. So it is an annually reviewed incentive, and the Taxes and Review Council is made up of the county, the school districts, and the local municipality. So um, not this February, but the following February, the village will receive notice um, that somewhere around the last Friday of the, of the second month of the year, we try to convene and review and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners on whether or not to continue the incentive. Most times it's fine, but there have been times where we needed to abate or we needed to modify the abatement. Um, and not during my time here, but I know that there have been instances where they they had to essentially eliminate the abatement because of conditions not being met. So that's an annual thing. This isn't a this isn't a see you later uh, type of uh, incentive. And the incentive that the CIC has provided as well is reviewable yearly. It's very similar to the enterprise zone, we're going to review it annually. And that, that is essentially what, <clears throat> that's a big part of the agreement itself, mm -hmm. the terms. The terms, um, yeah. Right. Okay. So, you guys don't want to hear from me anymore. Let me bring up Christine and uh, Ken Sauter from Day Mailing Services, and Tom as well. <laughs> Hello. Hi. 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 Just could you tell us a little, bit about, a little bit about your so, um, We've been in business for since 1984. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a family family owned business. I started with my dad. I was his right hand man. <laughs> and um, uh, about 10 years ago, he considered retiring. And so I actually uh, purchased the business from him. And in my tenure, we have uh, every year grown at least 30%. So we essentially have doubled our business in the and over my tenure. And so uh, because of that, we're, we're currently in a 100,000 square foot facility on multiple floors in downtown Dayton. That's been our home since the beginning. And with the type of work that we do, it's just not conducive to be up and down floors. And we employ about 80 people now. And so it's hard to manage you know, 80 people, multiple floors, um, especially when you're moving heavy rolls of paper. It's dangerous. So uh, we've been looking for a facility for about almost a year and a half now. And so, very happy to have a new home, <laughs> potential home, and um, uh, excited about uh, the community, being a part of the community. Uh, it's, it's a safe, you know, one of the most important things for me was to have a safe place for our staff. We mostly have women, and we work multiple shifts, so you want them to feel safe as they're leaving. And, and we're right outside of downtown, so we've not had any issues, but you know, we, that's a big concern for me. And so we're excited about uh, growing. Um, and we're, what's really exciting is we're growing in an industry that has been soft over the years. And so uh, the natural attrition of, com you know, it's right, the industry's right sizing. And we've spent a lot of money on technology that has really made us stand out. And so um, we, we have a, quite a few national clients that are growing significantly. And um, excited about having a new, us having new dicks. Because if you go to our place, we are literally on top of each other. You know, we've got machines in every single corner of the building, actually equipment and boxes because we don't have a place to put them. So uh, it's 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 very exciting. It should be exciting for the community and with our you know uh, growth in the traditional print as well as digital print um, with the graphic designers. I think that artisan feel it's a natural fit here in Yellow Springs. So we're very excited about it. Um, I know I know some of the concern or questions that have been raised relate to the tenants that are in the building now, and and what the plans are. We um, we have walk, done a walkthrough, and so we we uh, we have no issues with the tenants in, in the facility. Uh, there's plenty of parking to share, and uh, although we have many employees, we we run multiple shifts, so not everybody's there at the same time. Um, and we don't have a lot of traffic from customers. Most of our uh, customer traffic is over the phone, you know, with the internet. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're very um, happy with the flow. 
We'll have to make a few modifications for us so that we have, because our, our work is HIPAA compliant, um, and a lot of government and tax work, so we require some security, but it'll still have the flow. Um, we, we really don't. Tom, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I just think we're going through the discovery of the process, and we'll, we would notify all of the tenants of, of the potential modifications. That yeah, we, we don't have any intention of, you know, displacing anyone, so. And, and I do believe there is a, a planning commission hearing scheduled for a conditional use permit on December 28th. So yes, yes. something that, that um, staff really worked hard to get uh, to get in motion to make things go quickly for all of you. Yeah, it was really, uh, it was great when we met earlier to hear about, you know, in fact, you guys looked at the tenants as being part of your future vision um, yes, yes. for the building. And uh, I, I thought it might also be neat for people to hear, um, I heard your team members came up to Yellow Springs for a visit. We actually took a, a bus ride because they wanted everybody to see. So we loaded everybody up on a bus <laughs> and they got to walk through because you know you talk about it and, and you need to you need to feel know what your home's going to look like. So everybody was very excited. You know, it's it's a beautiful facility and it's and I've been in the industry for a long time so I was around when it was, you know, Antioch Publishing, then Creative Memories and so if you're in the printing industry, that was the standard there. So when we told our staff, people, some of the people that, are, that have been around for a while, older staff, they were like, that was the place to work. So for, for every, it, it was very exciting. It, the, the staff was super excited. Um, so it's been a, a struggle looking for a home, and we, we you know when you find the right house, you know when it, you go in. So, so everybody could see what home looked like. And, it was an exciting day. So. That's great. Well, we're, we're happy to have you. I went, uh, Green County Department of Development had a meeting last week and, and one focus on was on workforce. And so I think that there, there are lots of tools out there when you start to hire. Um, you know, we'll certainly, you know, hope that, that there's some Yellow Springs residents um, that are able to, to work there. Um, you know, even talking with Green Cats and there's need for, for public transportation. <coughs> try to work those kinds of things out. So, you know, we're all here to support you. We're incredibly excited. Um, you know, it's an opportunity that uh, that doesn't come along for a small town like us. So we're, we're, we're so. excited too. So. Yeah. And, and actually, other good news happened today. We found out also that, that it looks like YSI is talking about expansion oh, locally great. also. Yeah. So this is kind of a big day for This is a big day for you yeah. for yeah. <laughs> so. and, and Melissa tells me that earlier this evening she saw that you already have an ad in the local paper. Oh, great. Uh, yes, yeah, so. help. For <laughs> so, uh, we have, it, it's been a struggle to get good help. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're boarding on quite a few. New, this next year is going to be the biggest year that we've ever had. Um, so it's we're ramping up for that, so we're excited about it. Well, you've got a lot of resources here, so just be, be uh, comfortable and um, feel feel free to reach out to anybody that uh, that you need. So Absolutely. thank you for being okay. gracious. Oh, I think we have a vote to take. Um, any other comments, <coughs> comments or questions from citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, now is the time in the agenda where we hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. Um, three minutes, each person will have three minutes. We ask you to come to the podium and state your name. Okay. Seeing and hearing none, I'll uh, bring it back um, for the next item of business is special reports from the Energy Board. Anybody's welcome to leave. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we understand. Busy lives and uh, <laughs> yeah. the holiday season. Now, these guys, those guys might want to stay and listen to hear, listen to what the energy board has to say. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I was actually talking about the shook guys. You may want to also. <laughs> uh, okay, Rick. Solar uh, project. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, I'm Laurie, it was a great pleasure working with you all the time that I served on council. And, uh, we will all miss you up here. So, thank, you. thank you very much. Um, I'm here uh, on behalf of the Energy Board to talk about our favorite subject, solar energy. And um, I have, while I've prepared some notes, they are not uh, comprehensive. So their intent was to 
begin the discussion and cover some of the basics. You've probably seen them, but I'm going to read them uh, just to get us started. I'm here tonight to present on behalf of the Energy Board our unanimous recommendation to the Council to approve uh, staffs going out for bids on the solar installation on the Glass Farm. Uh, this particular project uh, is a recent development. Uh, yet reflects the long-standing efforts of Council and the Energy Board in their quest to make the village more sustainable. We owe this current proposal <coughs> to the hard work of Patty Bates, our manager, uh, and working with our energy consultant, John Courtney, if you I don't think he's here, uh, Johnny Burns, the utilities uh, supervisor, and our AMP representative. Uh, together, they have scoped a one to two megawatt uh, to be determined uh, project, which if completed would make our village energy portfolio, uh, I think around 9% renewable, a remarkable achievement. We think of that. Uh, additionally, it may include the possibility of some portion of the project being set aside for community solar, allowing individual, individual villagers the opportunity to lease their own panels. I know you're familiar with that, the community solar discussion, so this is sort of a melding of these many ideas. Uh, there are several factors which make this project both timely and viable. First, uh, forecasting our energy needs to the year up to 2017 shows us we have an open position, uh, which is uh, typically filled through uh, market purchases. Uh, and this position is roughly 4.5 megawatt hours or 15% of our annual energy consumption. Uh, the proposed project would potentially cut our market purchases in half. Uh, again, the details would be, uh, need to be determined, but that's a rough estimate of what we can hope to achieve through this uh, project. Secondly, uh, we have the space. Uh, the unused portion of the glass farm, excluding the uh, conservation area, is nearly 30 acres. Uh, this proposed installation would cover between five and 10 acres, or roughly a third of the available space. Uh, as you may be able to see on the map I provided, it's uh, not, it, it wasn't clear whether that was gonna show up or not, but it's, it's going to be the uh, westernmost end of that. Uh, and it's gonna be roughly the largest Installation would be roughly a third of that total area that you can see on there. Uh, and my, my edits didn't show up on your copy, I don't think, but uh, use your imagination. Uh, this would pro provide optimal access uh, to the village substation for making the uh, interconnection to our own grid. Uh, it would also leave over 20 acres of the glass farm available for future uses. And thirdly, uh, the project parameters make the successful bidder responsible for the financing and the owner, initial ownership of the array. The village would be only committed to purchasing the power. An option to own the installation after some period of time would be negotiated during the bid process. The obvious, obvious advantage to us in this time of budgetary concerns is our lack of financial exposure. There is, however, some urgency in this request, uh, and Patty will probably talk about this in a minute. Um, the firms bidding on this have a smaller, a smallish uh, planning window uh, with which to complete their financing and begin the construction by this summer. So um, that's why we're sort of uh, marshaling our, our resources at this point and uh, presenting tonight. So thank you, and uh, I like to remain here for any questions. And uh, I don't know if you want to talk about some of the details that I've omitted. I, I want to know where it's going. I mean, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's northernmost or westernmost. Sorry, westernmost part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, so one about is there a that? Is there a where the little dog leg is? There right was supposed now. to be, and it just didn't show up. Yeah. yeah it, is it sort of this? This. It is. It's is, the very topmost third. Right. Coming in off yeah. of Fairfield Yellow Springs. Right? So it's basically, is it kind of that line of trees? 
or a little above that? Probably above it. Above I would that. say above it, where, the, where it sort of juts in on either mm -hmm. side. That, that right, does, this little spot that here. That area represents about right. 10 about acres. About 10 acres. And that would be the largest. Right, so, uh, it could be only five. It could be five acres. It could be it's Seven. going to be between five and 10 acres, depending on the size of the installation. And there are several reasons um, for talking about it tonight. Um, first of all, the, the placement of that is, is optimal uh, to put it there because it is very close to our switching station, which really helps Johnny out. And it also lessens the cost of the project because we don't have to run it quite as far. The second uh, reason is there's access right off of Fairfield Mill Springs Road, which um, uh, Jason the Handy Screw is actually working on improving right now. The actual the the actual acreage that would be taken up uh, would depend on what angle the solar panels end up having to be at to, to make it optimum. But it would be 10 acres or five depending on what size wheel we go with. 10 acres would be two bag one of the reasons that we're talking about it tonight, and I see shared flatter is in the back of the room, they have a lease to farm that field. Mm -hmm. And it is, does not expire for another year. So if council chooses to move forward, um, I will need to talk to flatterers about um, renegotiating that lease a little bit. And, and Sharon's aware of this. This isn't a surprise to her. Um, we met last week. Or yeah, last week? Yes, yes. We did. thank you. Um, so that's one of the reasons that we're asking council to move forward. Another is because when we started talking about the, this with the energy board, um, there was the potential for the credits to run out by the end of 2016. That is still a possibility, although Congress has put in their uh, budget package potentially to extend those for another five years. Um, but that has not passed yet to my knowledge. Correct. I heard it was in the budget. I don't know this. Yeah, I don't think. Dan, do you? I, I don't know that it actually got passed. Okay. So uh, to that end, Johnny and I have met with five different solar. Uh, Brett, you know? It did pass. It on did. Friday, yeah. Okay. Friday. Well, there you go. There you go. Okay. So <laughs> I got to extend it for three more years. Yeah. Okay, so, that's good. Yeah. So Johnny, Johnny and I, um, <coughs> letting a contract for a uh, solar field is a little bit different <coughs> um, than letting a normal RFP in the government because it's considered a uh, privileged work product. We do it a little bit differently and I've asked Chris to research and make sure that we're doing this correctly, but essentially what you do is you meet with the solar providers, you review their proposals, and then you choose with whom you want to negotiate and move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so to that end, Johnny and I have met with five different solar providers um, and asked them to provide uh, us with all the same information, which we will take to the Energy Board on the 12th. And then um, the Energy Board will choose, um, if Council decides to move ahead, Energy Board will choose uh, who to talk to further and more in depth out of those five providers um, at a special meeting later in the month. Patty, for, for John, can you point out where our substation is in, in relationship to this map? It's, <coughs> it's not actually it's, on it's, it. It's, it's like right here. Sorry. Like right, right, right off the edge. Oh, okay, right so it's not edge. actually on the map. Yeah. I will actually bring line down to them from there. For the okay, oh, come on. Yes. Yes. And, and what, in terms of access to this property, mm -hmm. usually there's fence yeah. around solar. No, uh, and so, have to be a fence. yeah. So, how do you, how do we access the property? Like, if we wanted to develop the middle portion. Well, the the plan, the thought that Johnny had was this access here could be um, made a road and brought down the side, and then the solar would be down this okay. way, so that you would skirt around the edge of it. Or do we have other access points? There's like, there's 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 Red there's Road, there's 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 there, extended off of uh, King Street. And yeah, there. I mean, I. Uh, well, and then I think this, I mean, this right. would even be extended. Right. There's, there's actually probably a number. I mean, that was my biggest concern too: is are we, are we limiting ourselves? Our access yeah. and creating a development there. I mean, that's certainly the would, easiest. If I could wave a magic wand, I would put houses right on that. Well, um, for, that would be perfect for right there. I totally support the project. 
And I would also like to either assess what information we have about the property now, not only in terms of access points, but even more soil types, so that we know what's, what is the best place if we're gonna put housing on there, what's the best place for housing, what's the best place if we have to have wetlands or detention area, and then what's the best place for solar and try to be able to meet as many, well, all those needs, all of those needs, before we actually place the solar down. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know that, that just, you know, putting a putting a road at the edge, you know, I don't know that, that we should just take the most expeditious place to put the road. I mean, I think we need, I think there needs to be some kind of an idea of where the housing and what how the housing should integrate. So um, I don't know if we know how much work has been done on uh, anything has been done. Well, I, actually, I think the flatters have um, presented to, to Council Andrus the that shows at least the soil types. Oh. And the soil types, to some extent, show what would be good for housing, what would be good for wetlands, what would be good for detention. Well, yeah. But, but that anyway, it would seem that that could be concurrent, that that's something that we could, it would be worth our while to spend some, it's some expertise in there to look at that. And I don't disagree with that, um, but council would have to understand that that would probably put off the solar field for another year, because the flatters need to know if they can plan <coughs> the next this year. I mean, they have to plan, they have to buy seed, um, and the, so the well, I assume probably, we're under contract for this coming spring for them to right, plan. unless we renegotiate. That's oh, correct. Okay, I see. Well, I'm not talking about like thinking about taking the solar and putting it over the eastern portion. But there is going to be some wiggle room, and we might as well take advantage of the fact. It seems to me we could move ahead on both things. And um, if we know how much land we're going to be using, up to the uh, maximum amount we're going to be using, then hopefully uh, we can renegotiate regarding the. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of work that's going to have to be done on the solar that we don't have to maybe get down to the specifics of exactly. Well, they're they're going to want to know where they're going to site at. I mean, we we yeah, yeah. But, talked but, and then we showed them the back. But but back I mean, do they have to know? Well, I would absolutely agree that that's the best. Well, the, this, that's the this best is what area. They have shown. Yeah. So this is the. But you know. Where can it can it set through. over ten feet? You know, I mean, do they have to? Know? Oh, I mean, okay. it seems like if they could set over ten feet. I mean, my whole thing is, you know, instead of going right along the board, yeah, board, right. No, it, it was to meant to be moved down this way. The, the, yeah. the road would be coming in and going along the border, so that there was access, and, and the the field would sit down here. Well, it sounds like I mean that that kind of detail can be worked out. Yeah. We're really being asked just to say in principle do we support this plan at this kind of timetable that's suggested by this mm -hmm. plan, I'm correct. I have a few questions. Um, so uh, first of all, is there, were any other places considered, are there any other places where we could put there, solar fields? There's only one other place in the village that would hold a field of this magnitude and it doesn't belong to the village and I don't believe that the owners would be interested in selling it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <This Not point. laughs> okay. Um, uh, second thing, I, I, I don't understand why we're not sure about whether the community solar can be a part of this. Because the arrangement of a PPA um, means that basically the company that is building it gets to own the credits on it. Uh -huh. um, what Johnny and I have talked about is an internal program where we as the village could offer to villagers a, a supplemental arrangement on their utilities where perhaps they would pay a certain amount to be able to claim that, that, that the solar, come, their energy comes from solar, um, which is essentially what a, solar, a community solar is anyway. The only thing that the resident would not get would be the tax credit. And that's that's a, approximately what the community solar is also approximately what energy choice outside of the village allows you to do, right? You know, choose what kind of energy you're getting. Right. And you don't get those exact electrons that you're paying for. Okay. So you guys are happy with that piece of this? Um, and then 
I want to understand a little bit more about this small window thing. I mean, what's the... Well, that's a, the, the, the small window is somewhat alleviated by the fact that they did last Friday pass the extension of the okay, tax Okay, so credits. we were talking about the tax credits. Correct. Okay, because right. if they hadn't built it by the end of 2016, then they were not going to be able to get the tax credits. Okay. And we knew that was in the budget. That came up last week that it was in the budget, but it, I guess it just passed on Friday. But I so, guess the other issue would be how quickly we want to get this up to speed to meet those future energy needs. So that's correct. still a point, right? Right. It, it'll probably take nine months to build it. Um, and as I said, one of the things, one of the reasons that it was coming before council tonight was because of the lease that we have mm -hmm. with the Flatters department. I, I just. I'm just concerned, a little bit concerned to see that the glass farm be getting carved up into so many pieces. And I mean, it really is our best opportunity for development and for larger scale, for larger development. Um, we've talked about mixed use. We've talked about um, a mix of housing types and, and you know, large unit, small unit. And I guess I just I, I worry that it's you know that we're that we're making a decision that's going to impact the future of the glass farm and we don't know what we're going to do with the glass farm we don't have a plan yet but we're just carving out little pieces and you know it is where it's located going to be the best place you know we're not you're thinking about the best place for solar but you're not thinking about necessarily about the development the residential development of the glass farm that's that's I'm not saying I don't support the project. That concerns me. I don't like to. I don't like to take a, a, an incredible piece of property and and just plot things down on it without broader planning. Well, solar field, you know, has a has a life. It, it, you know, it, it may be in there for ten years, and at that point, the village might have an option. You know, just more possible, and the village would have an option to take over How ownership of it. However, at that point. We could say no, we don't want it, and it could be removed, so that the land isn't really gone forever. I mean, we've been sitting on the glass farm for how many years, mm -hmm. um, and which you know, and, we'll, and then they'd still be 20 acres left that we have a lot of you know latitude to work with. Um, it would be 10 acres that would perhaps be set aside for 10 years. But it's our choice, of course. How easy are panels to be moved? Let's say, let's say, I mean, could a few panels be moved? As you know, I mean. It, is there any flexibility to move them once they're installed? Or does that just make it? I'm going to ask for that. Not a really yeah. 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 Installer here. When a developer uh, signs a PPA, it's intended to be there for 25 years. Uh, and, and I mean, that's a pretty major expense to have to move. I mean, you get into that with roofs, and you, know, you always want to look at the. To move them or to, to reconfigure? Well, Either one is going to be a major expense. So, but can you clarify? Rick said 10 years, you said 25 years. Could you clarify the difference? It just depends yeah, on the agreement that you sign. PPA. Most developers are signing 25 year PPAs. And I mean, I mean, if the village wanted to purchase it in six years or 10 years, um, then the village would have to bear the expense of relocating, uh, which is it's, it's not cheap. Well, so I, think, I wouldn't see that being a feasible. Um, I think what Johnny and I asked most of the, the developers to present was 20 and 25 or something in that neighborhood. So. That's typical because of the expected life of the solar panels themselves. Mm -hmm. So actually, in the real experience, they seem to last much longer. One other question, Patty. So, did I understand correctly that um, the energy board would kind of act like a CIC in this process? No, no, no. The energy board will just vet the the proposals, uh -huh. just just like the committee did with the water plant proposals. They, these would go before the energy board to look at and and, and evaluate on, on behalf of council. But you mentioned something about there being proprietary knowledge and that the. The information that the developers present to the energy board is considered confidential work product. Okay. So the energy board will actually have to go into executive session to consider them. 
I mean, it, it seems to me that I, I, I would like to support this, and what I would like to suggest is that, you know, you do your best to imagine, uh, use whatever information we have about soils or whatever, to imagine an access point, and then any developer who just has to work with the property. I've seen, sitting on the Green County Regional Planning, you certainly see some pretty odd shaped things that come in just because of the boundaries that are available. Um, and um, obviously, no doubt, um, if we actually get ourselves together and, and get a uh, get a proposal put together to, to get that land developed, um, which would be a miracle in some ways. I'd really like to see that miracle. Um, it may be that we would wish that we had moved things, you know, 10 feet over this way, but I doubt that you're going to do anything that's going to make it impossible. Although it's scale. I mean, part for a developer, we're reducing the scale. We're reducing the amount of money. As a, the amount of units a developer can build, and reduce, we're reducing the amount of we're, we're reducing the attractiveness of a project for a developer by taking ten acres out. Well, I mean, I too am concerned because I really want to see housing, especially rental housing and affordable housing on that property. But the property as it stands now is 44 acres, and the um, the Tension Wetlands area is eight. That leaves 36 acres. Um, this project, and one thing council might consider is saying, well, we don't want to go up to 10, we only want to do five, or maybe we only want to do eight. But even if we do 10, if we were to say 10, um, that's still 26 acres left. And um, that, that a pretty nice, sizable development could happen on 26 acres. I think. So well, and, and the solar, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I mean, at, we, at some point we talked about doing mixed use, but um, my sense at this point is, I mean, we have the area where the uh, where Antioch Midwest is that could, I'm hopeful, we'll have businesses out there at some point. Um, and I think this is mostly going to be reserved, I would say this mostly for housing, and I mean, quite a nice development project could happen there. You know, we also have some other housing projects that hopefully will come online at Antioch and at the uh, old Wright State property. Um, uh, I guess I lost my well, I, I, I wish I just wish we could have found I, I wish we could have found a less valuable piece of land. I just you know it, I never think you should put solar on prime developable land. It just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I'll support the I, I, I think the community wants solar. I think the staff in the energy board have spent a lot of time on it. I'll support it. Um, I you know I wish and, and I know that there isn't another piece of land because I know we're not going to get that other piece of land. Um, so, um, I just, you know, I just, it just, we, we will be cognizant of placing the field in the most appropriate and least in, encroaching position that we can. I mean, maybe it could be moved back to the Yeah, I mean, I, I trust, I trust everybody. I just, you know, I just feel that there, I just feel that there are issues that have to be brought up. I think that it's. We have talked about this piece of property, developing this piece of property for a long time, and it keeps getting smaller and smaller. So I think we need, you know, it just is, I think it's something that needs to be on the record um, as a concern. I hear you. Just so you know, this wasn't the only piece that we looked at. We actually looked at by the farm, but the cost to get the three phase line back to where we needed to go just was astronomical. So we didn't, oh, I know. We didn't I know just say well, on that yeah, glass. Yeah, but by, by the farm, he needs some. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, I know that. I mean, right. So, thanks. I mean, what do you, you're just looking for what? What do you want? Uh, uh, what do you want? Just we keep a uh, uh, yeah, thumbs yeah. up for, for Patty. Thumbs up for Patty. And, and uh, come back with resolutions, et So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I guess we're just going to manager and assistant manager and court reports. We're not going to vote on that? No, I think we just, no, just move forward. Okay. Um, most of my report is self-explanatory. Um, the letter has been sent to the task force with the 90-day notice per the agreement. Um, you see the works, the public works, uh, the police department, and uh, the water plant is moving forward. Um, the only thing um, that I would like to make sure that council is okay with is that I've been asked to serve on the Green County uh, Emergency Management Advisory Board. And I would agree to do so as long as the council has no objection uh, to that. And that's all I have. It's exciting. The barn is going up. Huh? The barn the is going up. Donnie really? Burns, the man of the hour. So we'll have a barn on the farm. <laughs> you might need to have a barn dance before you fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Melissa? Basically my report was just covering what was in the packet um, with the change with the supplemental appropriations and uh, other than that it's just getting ready for year end and the uh, annual financial reports and then the beginning of the audit which will be here before I know it so that's it. So right. Thank you. And uh, Judy? Uh, I wrote a big tome which you can read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciated it. Hey, sure. Yeah. Hey, sure. But I, I, the, what I would like to note is that uh, this this getting rid of the backlog of uh, records has been a really huge deal. Hmm. I I can't even tell you what a huge deal it has been. It, this is 50 years worth of records. So I just want to stress here that um, Denise Swinger, Melissa Van Zandt. Dorothy Smith, who cataloged all those things to make certain that we were getting the right records for passport destruction. Um, Conflagration. Conflagration, <laughs> indeed, because I just, you should know that they, they loaded 11 uh, 2.5 cubic yard front, front end loader buckets. I can't even picture that. With level. boxes. And the fire was going for about five days. It took quite a very long time. So. Um, great thanks to everyone that participated in that. And major. we didn't have a weenie roast for some reason. Well, um, <laughs> there were some minor health concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> it affected the weenie roast situation. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, we have to wait for some other kinds of records for that possibility. So, that, but that, that was it. And then my thanks to council for uh, my excellent evaluation. Thank you so much and happy new year. It, and I would like to note that we're now going to do records discussion oh, yeah. once a year <laughs> so that we don't have to have a conflagration <laughs> and uh, that we can um, we can get rid of them once a year and, and be on the schedule to do it. I think every in February, I think. And in fact, yeah, we have sort of pre-planned the next records commission meeting so that we can stay right on that. It <laughs> <laughs> could be share sure. backlog. That is... Do that you, is something. Does that mean that the uh, the building out there on, on Southern Farm is empty now? But they cleared out with six rooms. All of the records should be out. All, all the records are out. They still got desk and okay. panels and all that. Some records. Some, some records. There are some, some live yeah. records. So we, so That's in the house of the farm. Yeah. yeah. What's left of it? So we <laughs> we should be able to do something with that coming here. With the with the with building, that, that building, with that building, uh, I believe has asbestos in it. Okay. So um, destroying it would cost quite a bit of money. So we would have to look for a grant, probably to help with the remediation from that. Yeah, because it's just a, a right. It's it's yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's sad. Mm -hmm. um, people are talking about that place. Oh, well, I know, and it wasn't lived in that long ago. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Moving on to board and commission reports, Lori. Um, planning Commission reviewed um, two different um, conditional uses and we approved them. And we will be address, or I should say they, because this is my last like <laughs> moment in the sun. But the uh, the next planning commission will be uh, addressing the square footage concern about accessory dwelling units that will take up in the year. And uh, 
I did meet with the Green County Regional Planning Board. They were very excited about the I-35 corridor plans that they have to make it so it, there, there aren't any stops on it. Um, I'm a little ambivalent, but they were very excited, so. I agree with you. I'm ambivalent about the money, but it, it is really kind of, it's a sa it has become a safety issue. That's my understanding. And it's, it's a pretty serious safety issue, and it really is about moving traffic, and unfortunately, the traffic they're concerned about moving is a lot of truck traffic. Yeah. And yeah. so it is an important part of the transportation system. But I agree with you, it generally doesn't make me happy. Um, Jerry? Uh, the only, well, let me take this back. Uh, <coughs> Uh, library Commission, <coughs> we met uh, and we kind of informed them that you know, the roof was the, the last major project to be able to fund for a while. And they understood that. And, uh, uh, got a few issues with the roof, but we were working at. Yeah. With the flashing? Yeah, the flashing. And, Oh, it's just kind of white. I noticed it the other day. Although it took me a while to notice it, and I'm like, wow, that's really Well, something was already in leaves on the trees. Yeah, that's probably for sure. <laughs> okay, and, and, and <laughs> you got to be born on mediation, and again, now, uh, now, uh, <coughs> uh, community resources, this way, you may want to this, what it's going to be. Okay, Brian? Um, so one commission that's not on the list yet, but I did want to mention is the Economic Sustainability Commission. Um, we'll have its first uh, official meeting on, on January 6th. So that commission will be meeting here in council chambers the first Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, we already have five people on the commission and uh, three more people have applied recently. So uh, we're really excited and I think there are going to be a lot of um, Sort of initial things that we can focus in on that will help promote some of the economic activity in the village. Uh, in terms of the Arts and Culture Commission, formerly the Public Art Commission, uh, we did not meet in December, but uh, we did successfully uh, pass on the Village Inspiration and Design Award to Alan Macbeth. That was a really nice, uh, and he shared a lot of stories, and Diane wrote, wrote a great story. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, so we are taking nominations for the next veto, which will be awarded in uh, the early in the year, probably around February. And uh, community access panel, um, first of all, uh, I really thought Susan's station manager report was great, just giving us stats and, and looking at uh, what's going on with uh, community access. Um, I feel like Susan has met the goals that council had for this to make sure community meetings are out there and on the web. Uh, we're now talking about how many DVDs and things like that do we actually need to make to make the job um, you know, a little bit more straightforward and, and really meet the needs of the community. Um, the wireless mesh project for downtown is still being discussed. Um, the current thing is uh, the issue that came up at council about the remote readers and um, some of the health concerns uh, is, is sort of being vetted. Um, and also we will soon be seeing uh, a proposal for the community broadband. Um, so the white paper is almost done, the financials are the last piece. Thank you, Melissa, for working with the group on that. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, sorry, Mary Ann? Yeah. So the Energy Board made its presentation about the solar project. That was the focus of our last meeting. The Environmental Commission uh, talk started, we started talking about 2016 plans, which mostly will be continuation of current projects, one of which is the wellhead protection plan. And, and we did some brainstorming about how to educate the community around that. Um, also, I had planned on bringing a recommendation about uh, stopping bottled water at the Bryan Center, but other things got in my way. <laughs> um, but I, I will bring that at our next meeting. Um, 
And then the Human Relations Commission, we started talking about um, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, and we're not ready to come to council yet because we actually want to meet with some Indigenous people to, to get input uh, regionally about that. Um, other projects, one which uh, Chrissy Cruz has worked on is getting uh, fresh produce. And I don't think, Patty, do you remember the name of that project? I do not, but it is a, a food bank out of the Dayton area that brings fresh produce and bread once a month. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be using um, the corner of our parking lot um, out by the, um, the handicap ramp that comes down from the bike path mm -hmm. um, to hand that out. So hopefully we can get that um, publicized. That, that's part that of the that's part of the food bank sort of idea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But they, uh, as opposed to providing canned goods yes. or things like that, it's uh, strictly produce, fresh produce, and, mm -hmm. and baked bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And yeah. Um, we talked about our retreat a bit, and also about potential HRC role in uh, dealing with drugs in the community. Okay. Thank you. Um, the chamber had a uh, board election. Um, new board members are Danielle Mershon from um, Wildflower Boutique, Stacy Weary from Arthur Morgan House, Nick Gaskins from Big Design, and Ann Simonson was re-elected to a second term. Um, we had our holiday party last week and it was incredibly well attended. And uh, we'll, we will be having our board retreat um, the second Thursday in January. Um, we're actually, and we're losing two longtime board members, um, Lisa Goldberg and um, Susan Miller, um, who are both turned out, turned off the board. And Anita Brown is actually moving on uh, because of other responsibilities. Um, I think that's, and I did not attend an MBRPC meeting. Um, I think that's it. I do have two other things that I've thought of while I was sitting here. First of all, the sidewalk, uh, the handicap ramp that council asked us to try to remedy the switchback situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a plan for that. In fact, we contracted with a contractor and we should be starting to work on that this week or next. Now this is for, the, for that one? This is our handicap ramp. The, the big back. switch long. Yes. You can in fact make that sidewalk actually uh, handicap compliant by putting small landings in it. So we're going to do that, and he's going to take out that ramp, and then uh, Jason and Johnny uh, are going to restore out there. So, nice. um, and it's actually a minimal cost uh, to do it. I think it was like thousand dollars. Oh, wow. really? Cool. Wow. Awesome. Um, and the second thing is, I will be on vacation next week. I've been using the last of my vacation up for the year. So I'm not leaving town. I will be around, but so you shouldn't have told anybody that. Well, you know. Okay, everybody be busy for Christmas. Yeah. Um, so future agenda <laughs> items for a January fourth meeting. Let's go back to seven o'clock meetings. So we'll no no more six thirty meetings. Hopefully, we aren't starting the year with so much work to do that we have to start early. Um, so first will be the ceremonial swearing in of new and returning council members and Mayor Cobert. Um, we've got a resolution uh, related to OM, Ohio Municipal League membership. Um, we'll do the nomination of president and vice president, um, review and assignment of council representatives, boards and commissions. A um, couple of other things related to those kinds of things I thought we should talk about. We should review council rules. Um, which we do at every change of council. Um, and I think at that time, I'd like to review um, the meeting structure, the change that we made for to um, having one meeting as a, uh, um, as a work session. So I'd like to just review that and see if we want to continue. And I think we'd, I'd also um, like to at least begin a discussion of, of scheduling a retreat um, and then also begin a discussion of how to how we're going to do the goals discussion. So just to, we're not we don't need to talk about 2016 goals, but let's just plan the discussion. Um, we've got another two two other resolutions: one authorizing the Glen annexation, and one um, related to the um, 
OPWC, Ohio, OWDA loan that we're going to get for um, the water plant. So anything else anybody wants to add? Um, the community <laughs> access panel finally uh, took up the uh, social media policy for the village. And so it didn't come in time for this meeting, but I, I would like to look at that because um, I think it's, you know, we've talked about it for two years, so it'd be good to get something in place. It's a pretty good draft. They used the research that Nadia and Rati did, as well as a lot of other best practices, so. Well, I think that, um, I think that that actually could potentially fit into the council rules discussion. Um, yep. Have social media uh, proposal. Okay. Anything else? It sounds like we'll have a good first meeting. Okay. Um, can I get a what? Oh. Somebody's birthday's tomorrow? Yeah, we'll oh. <laughs> 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 oh well. So yes, it is uh, it is Birthday tomorrow, so let's take this opportunity to wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday. 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 A young man of 74 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you look darn good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe that. Really. No, I really, I don't believe that. You're lying. Yeah, you get emotion yeah. to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor, see if anybody's saying aye. 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 Okay, so. Okay.